sure a lot of you have heard stories about all the cricket played at Lords, all the great tradition at Lords, what it means to be out here playing. So that while we're in England, we just go across, give you a tour of Lords. I'll be your guide. I've never been on one of those myself. So I thought, there we are, the old pavilion there, we're going to start from there. But remember, wearing a shirt, trousers, shoes, I'm okay to be in Lords. I love old gear whenever I go to a cricket museum. Look at the shoes that the great Alec Bedser wore. I counted 10 to 11 loops. Can you imagine the weight he must have been dragging along? And it's interesting that he's placed alongside Jimmy Anderson and Glenn McGrath. Their shoes are probably half the weight. Adam Gilchrist, ah! A Deccan Chargers helmet, hey, IPL in the home of, uh, the home at Lords here. Now, as, as you go around, there's this uh, wicket keeping glove. Lots of old wicket keepers here, but amidst them, someone who kept the wicket keepers busy, Shane Warne. But I'm interested in going across to the other side because no visit to the Lord's Museum is complete without a look at Tendulkar. Just look at that portrait there. Isn't it a fabulous portrait? That pavilion, uh, the, the, the media centre at the back came in much later. That stand with the sails, all that came in much later. And uh, for my friend Akash Chopra, I'm going to send him that little photograph there as well. And I'm going to end this section of the tour. Look at those pads. I mean, I know pads were always made like that and had coating around it. But those pads to me, almost skeleton-like, just tells me where our game came from and where our game has gone. Like Jack Hobbs' gloves. When we were kids, we always had these spiky green gloves and to think that even what some of the greatest wore gloves like those is absolutely fascinating to see that is why when i go around i don't look that much at jerseys and helmets i look at the shoes the gloves the bats and the pads this of course is the home of english cricket and that is what they fight for that little thing you see that uh, wooden stand at the bottom they actually made that later the ashes urn is only that little thing up there that's what they fight for that's what they dream of that might be little, it's the significance that's much greater. But if you're Indian and you want to do one cricketing pilgrimage in your life, yeah, come along here, come here, come, come. That is the World Cup of 1983. It changed Indian cricket. It influenced a whole generation. It gave the Tendulkas and the Dravids the, the dreams to go on and play for India. That is the original Prudential World Cup. They then made replicas to keep in the, in the BCCI office. But because it wasn't called the Prudential Cup after 83, that was the last time this cup was held. And this is the picture, the famous picture that you see of Kapil Dev holding it up, the picture that made you so proud to be Indian. That is the cup. We hear all these stories, don't we, of batsmen who refuse to wear helmets. The great Viv Richards didn't wear a helmet. Sunil Gavaskar wore a skull cap. They've got one of those here. Take a look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. He told me once that the reason it's shaped like that was because he wanted to cover the temples. And that is why you'll find it's there. So he used to put that on and then wear the floppy white hat. So if you look at the old pictures of Sunil Gavaskar, you'll see a little white thing peeping out under the big wide-rimmed floppy hat. That's what it was and that's what he wore in 87-88 at the MCC Bicentennial here when he got his first 100 Lords. 11 o'clock, start of play every day, somebody comes and rings the bell. That signifies that play is about to start. Often visiting player just comes here. No, not me. You hear all these stories about how tense batsmen are when they're walking down the steps to go out to bat for the first time. They've just come past a massive portrait of Viv Richards and here they come the first turn to go out and they see Sagar Field Sobers, the greatest cricketer of all time, 8,000 runs and you say, can I, can I score a fraction of those? And then there you are, you're strapping your pads on, you're getting ready and you're tense and you come down and you see, oops, he scored a few runs himself. Don Bradman, 6,996, averaged almost 100. I'm in my first test. So down the steps, through the long room, my shoes are actually, the spikes are clattering, and there I am with the door, about to push the door and get out onto the ground. And so finally, down the steps, the greats have trod on. Vinu Mankar and Sunil Gavaskar did, Kapil Dev did, Sachin Tendulkar and Rahul Dravid did. And here you go, walk down the last steps, this is the famous gate that you push open, there it is, onto the ground to score your 100.
I was of course pretending to bat, but that's where I actually work. That beautiful media centre, one of the best in the world. When it first came up, people said, what's a spaceship doing in the most traditional test match centre in the world? But it's added enormously to, uh, to the aura, to, the, to just the sheer presence, the visual beauty of Lords itself. And I remember sitting at various parts in there, telling the stories of uh, many great moments of cricket. For my generation, that balcony means that the last wicket has just fallen out there. India won the World Cup and everyone's up there screaming at what was considered impossible. For another generation, right on the edge over there is Saurav Ganguly, no shirt on, waving it around because India have won the Nat West. One picture defining one generation, one picture defining another.